Visualizing Time and Space, 19th Century Connections Between Photography, Science, and Art. In the 1840s, much of the world was introduced to photography through the daguerreotype and calotype, two popular processes that began to democratize portraiture and place it in the hands of the middle class. The daguerreotype and calotype, though, were quickly supplanted with the new and improved wet plate process, which involved coating a glass plate negative with a material called collodion. This process, while tricky to manage, was less toxic, easier to replicate than the calotype process, and retained the high degree of detail so treasured by the public in daguerreotype images. In the same decade, albumin, a substance naturally found in egg whites, was identified as a key ingredient in sensitizing sheets of paper that could now be used to make positive contact prints of the collodion-coated glass plate negatives. Several spin-off processes emerged that used collodion in different ways. The ambrotype was a single sheet of glass coated with collodion and silver nitrate. It was then exposed to light while still damp, developed, and then fixed, and the resulting image on glass appeared to be negative until a black substance or material was placed behind it, and then it appeared positive. Like daguerreotypes, ambrotypes were unique and circulated in nested boxes to preserve their delicate nature. Tintypes were another spin-off process that also utilized collodion. Rather than applying collodion to a sheet of glass, as with the ambrotype process, tintypes were created by coating a metallic sheet with collodion, placing it in a camera, and exposing it while still damp. The resulting images were durable, unlike ambrotypes, and the process was simple and used accessible, low-cost materials, resulting in an affordable option that made portraiture a reality even to the working class. The third spin-off process is the carte de visite, which were essentially albumin prints from a glass plate negative that were created with multiple lens cameras. This enabled a series of small images to be captured on a single plate in one exposure. When the plate was printed on albumin paper, the print pictures could be cut down into card-like objects. Carte de visites resulted in an increased exchange of portraits and introduced celebrity culture to the West. Now that's something we all still experience the effects of on a daily basis. Despite the tedious preparations of the wet plate collodion process, photographers embraced it, even when their work required them to take their darkroom with them. A far cry from our 21st century concept of mobile photography. And in doing so, they documented glimpses of territories unfamiliar to many people throughout much of the 19th century. Today, while these territories have changed, this still remains a common application of the photographic image. And they also experimented with unique techniques and visual styles in an effort to experiment and advocate for photography's status as an art form not too different from the work of many contemporary digital photographers of today. Then, just two decades after the emergence of the wet plate collodion process, photographers began to explore time and motion. But how could still photography correlate with a moving image? As a result of photography experiments, scenes like this would soon be recorded with cutting-edge movie cameras as early as the turn of the century. But movies like that one are the result of experiments conducted with cameras much like those used to record daguerreotypes. Some of the earliest experimentations of photography, time, and motion were made by bookseller-turned-photographer Edward Moybridge. Prompted in the early 1870s by Leland Stanford, former governor of California and president of the Central Pacific Railroad and a wealthy horse enthusiast, Moybridge set out to capture the appearance of a horse in mid-gate, an image that is impossible for the unaided human eye to render. 
To complete his objective, he used specially treated light sensitive emulsion that had been hypersensitized by heat and a dozen different cameras set up carefully around a racetrack. The cameras were triggered one by one by a galloping horse, and when all the plates were collected, developed, and printed, Moybridge assembled them back into their natural sequence. His study revealed that the only time a galloping horse removes all of his feet from the ground is when his feet are tucked beneath its belly, rather than stretched out in front and back. This was significant and demonstrated that painters had actually been portraying horses in full gallop incorrectly. Moybridge's horse studies were made available to the scientific community in 1878 when they were published in Scientific American. To demonstrate the correlation between Moybridge's study and a method for creating the illusion of images of, of motion with still images, readers were encouraged to cut out the images into strips like this and assemble them into a single band. The images could then be placed into a zoetrope a device Moybridge spoke publicly about. When the zo zoetrope was spun, viewers could look at the images from the side through a series of vertical slits. The result was the illusion of motion, created through a sequence of still images. The motion picture had been born. Moybridge continued his studies with financial backing from the research community and published volumes of locomotion studies of human figures and animals in motion. By the 1890s, he was joined by scientist Marie, who took images, who took things one step further. Unlike Moybridge's single sequential photographs, Marie devised a method of recording a figure move through space on a single sensitized plate. His innovative approach to representing time in a single image broke more than 400 years of tradition that began in the Italian Renaissance. Since that time, still images were aimed at representing a view of nature from a single fixed point. Those days were now over. Photography's interplay with science yielded the birth of the motion picture, but also altered the tradition of painting in many ways. The 1870s was a chaotic decade for the tradition of Western painting. In these years, new unconventional subjects were introduced, like Eakin's The Gross Clinic, which portrayed a 19th century surgical lecture, complete with a doctor named Dr. Gross, a patient, a horrified mother, and curious student observers and informed the work of impressionist artists like Claude Monet who disrupted the flawless representational paintings so coveted by the French public by introducing sketch-like paintings aimed at capturing the essence or impression of the fleeting qualities of light in the world and also inspired the next generation of artists, including Paul Cezanne, to push the representation of space into new territory. <music>